All right, thanks everybody for your patience. I'll call the meeting to order at 535. <clears throat> We'll take care of a few, um, a little bit of business here, and then we'll go right to the farm to school presentation. Um, first of all, 1.1 reception of guests, and we have many guests here tonight. If you want to just uh, state your name for the video? Sure. Meg Dawkins. Allison Levin. Corinne Streisberg. Karen Fraser. Carol Hans. Matthew DeGroote. Cynthia Gauthier. Bill Kimball, Chris Winters, Eric Chase. <clears throat> and first of all, are there any, uh, there's agenda review and revisions. Are there any uh, additions to the agenda? So I have a resignation that should have come to you back in February. Uh, for Cindy, uh, I think it's a big secret uh, that Cindy's retiring this year. Uh, but it should come at that point. Add that um, 5.4. Uh, well, we have a 5.4 that was added back on Friday, which is the acceptance of PE teacher hire. PE hire. So we have a, you can do, the, you can do it anywhere you want, but 5.5, I would just advise if we make something for retirement. Yeah, I think at the time it was discussed because the teacher wanted to present to us. Got it. Okay. I know Carl, you, you and Carl and I, I don't, I don't need to get into it. It's my responsibility to make sure the board's properly. But I think that there was I have a good idea of why I didn't get here. Yeah, because the teacher wants to make a presentation. All right. Uh, any other additions to the agenda? I wanted to um, speak regarding art and project photos, student photos, and also about policies. And what, uh, I think I know what the topic is for art and project photos, but for policies, what was that about? For another, I'm sorry, it I wasn't was, at the last meeting. Oh, it didn't come up at the last meeting okay. because a couple of people weren't here. Um, but Bill and I had had an exchange still about having a complete set of policies and procedures, and he felt it needed to come back to the board for direction. Okay. Just looking at our agenda for tonight, and I'm wondering if that's if we can talk about art and project photos tonight and maybe policies on the next agenda, would that be all right? Might come up under uh, board goals anyway. Okay. So maybe a brief conversation, and if it needs to be more in depth <clears throat> for a future date, but a brief conversation tonight about art and project photos um, under three, <coughs> as 3.7. Any other? Additions, revisions? Any public comments or correspondence? Yep, my husband asked me to um, extend his appreciation for using the school for the uh, annual Scholastic Chess Tournament. There were 140 Vermont students there. There were some um, photos in the paper today of it, which is always great to have positive things going on. Um, for those who aren't familiar with it, just another note that it's, um, at least for the last couple of years, it's been the Berlin Fire Department and Ladies Auxiliary that has done the food and Rochester, as in Rochester, New York, uh, chess comes out with um, chess products and novelties, which are always a hit in Vermont where you don't have the ability to buy some of those things locally. And uh, he especially wanted me to mention appreciation for uh, Chuck who was around for setup stuff and Jeff who was here the day of it. Cool. Thanks. Thanks for that report and um, I didn't get to go this year but my kids have been before and they really enjoyed it. Any other public comments or correspondence? And we'll just note here future meetings. We have next month <clears throat> May's meeting is on the 14th at 5.30. And June is an SU board um, at 5.30. 2.0, the consent agenda, 2.1, approve the minutes. I'd entertain a motion um, to approve the minutes of the March meeting. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion on the minutes? Nice job, Martin. 
Those in favor of the, uh, approving the minutes of March 28th, signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed, no. All right, now on to the discussion agenda and the farm to school presentation. Take it away. Thanks for coming tonight. So I'm Allison Levin. I'm a parent and a community partner here at the school. Um, Cindy and Meg are also going to present with me today um, as part of the Farm to School te team here at Berlin Elementary. Um, in particularly, we wanted to tell you about, um, reach out to all the different community groups relating to the school after we were involved in the Farm to School Institute in June. Um, six of us went um, to um, the Farm to School Institute, um, a three-day um, program um, that was held to help us um, re-energize our program and cement our goals and help us prepare for a more vibrant farm to school program in the future um, here at Berlin and for the coming years. This was uh, through a grant that we applied for and also used um, some matching professional development funds um, to support um, the institute that we, we, we did. Mm -hmm. Next slide. So we wanted to help people understand what farm to school is. Um, and this is, is not just unique to our school. Um, many schools across the state are, are having different farm to school efforts and across the country. Um, and this is material that we've taken from those efforts, um, not something that we created. Um, farm to school strives to engage every student and the community in a local food and farm culture that nurtures students' health, cultivates um, viable farms and builds vibrant communities. So this is the general concept of farm to school um, and what's based. I know we're in a very tight, but can yeah. I add a few things along the way? So I, when I think about it, I think it's really just helping kids understand where their food comes from. It doesn't come from a package or a can, it comes from a garden. So that's when I think about it, that's what I really think mm -hmm. it is. So as part of our work at the Institute, we worked on thinking about what our values here at Berlin are um, in terms of farm to school. And this is a statement that we came up with and it's sort of a living, moving document. And we also have a simpler version that we are using in our actor interactions with the students. Um, but this is, this is what we came up with. So Berlin Elementary School strives to empower people and community stewardship, uh, power people and community stewardship of health and wellness. We do this for engaging engagement with experiential education, environmental awareness, and integration of the classroom, community, and cafeteria. So those three elements, the cafeteria, community, and cafeteria, the classroom, cafeteria, <laughs> and community, in whichever order you want to list them in, um, we call them the three C's, um, are the key components of farm to school. Next slide. So here's thinking about those three components and and how we can work to make them as interconnected as possible, um, working to connect the community with the classroom and the cafeteria and providing opportunities um, for learning in all those different environments. Um, and there's many, many of those different kinds of opportunities for all of our students in Berlin, um, here at, at the school, but as part of the, the community as well. So just a little bit touching on each of these three elements. Um, the classroom, here is a, a picture of students um, after working on their mystery box program, which we'll get into detail a little bit later with some of the other things that we're also doing here at Berlin. But this is an opportunity for students to engage with fresh fruits and vegetables and they do this in the classroom, but they may be doing this in the garden as well. And there's many different ways that um, we're providing to expose all the students um, here about healthy produce and vegetables and how food is grown in the community and using the classroom as part of that opportunity. So when I was thinking about the, the classroom and the, especially this thing called mystery box. So Allison and I started that a few years ago. She brings me a box. I don't ever know what's coming in and not just my classroom, several other classrooms now. And the kids have to do like 20 questions to figure out what's in the box. And then whatever's in the box, we do all sorts of math with it. And I just started jotting down 
um, you know, some of the words like circumference, length, diameter, average. When I was working more with fifth and sixth grade, we did a lot with the median, with the mode, um, with range, with weight. We're looking at ounces and grams, looking at pounds, prices, lapse time. How long did it take for these things to grow? You know, of course, all the addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, quarts, pints, gallons, bushels. I mean, there's so much that goes into this box of vegetables, and it's motivating. So a box of vegetables or a box of apples or whatever it is, and the kids love it, and they get to taste it, and they talk about the textures, and they're trying these different foods that they've never tasted. Things like kohlrabi. Mm -hmm. um, so I you didn't had, add it either, haven't you? <laughs> I haven't had it either. So, you know, it's really exciting, and, um, and it's fun, and, and it doesn't cost anything. Um, so that's, a, that's one of the beautiful parts. It's all, it's all donated yeah. through our program. Yep. So beyond the classroom and opportunities that we do through community partnerships, um, we also have many opportunities through the cafeteria, whether it's through our healthy snack program um, or other ways that we can engage all of our students on a regular basis in trying new things. Chef Austin has been working with us through the, the farm to school program in integrating um, new vegetables and trying new things and providing new opportunities for the students to engage with new culinary experiences and healthy healthy eating here at school. Um, and so that's a very a key component and way to make sure that the cafeteria is also a learning environment for our students. So one thing we haven't done as much of as we wanted to was more taste testing, where they, you'd be preparing little bits of things and bringing around to taste. With the healthy snack, there is a lot of that, but there's also this encouragement to have students do taste testing and to you know broaden their horizons on the things that they eat. Um, the picture of the kids there that you can see, that's last year's Junior Iron Chef team. So we had a lot of interest last year and this year. Um, the school funded one of the registrations and the students and their parents um, funded the other one. Last year we had a donation, this year the kids kind of, they did um, a bake sale, Not no they did a raffle and they raised the money that way. They also get little chef's coats and hats to wear to the competition which happens up at um, uh, the Champlain Valley Fairground and this year one of our teams won and by chance they were also selected to go to the state house on Thursday where they'll be presenting and hearing resolutions around um, you know the farm to school and the junior iron chef so this has really been been a fun thing it's, it's typically just the sixth graders but we had fifth graders interested this year we were hoping we'd get like a joint team with the seventh and eighth grade but that didn't happen so we pulled up some um, some, they allowed some fifth graders to come in. So we had the youngest team there and they did really, really well. You would have been so proud of them. And they look so awesome in their chef coats and hats. <laughs> and Austin was one of the chefs. I was one of the coaches. And this woman who works at Norwich was another one. And Donna Barr, who used to work here, also coached. So I think we have at least three people who are hopefully going to coach again next year. And the kids are very excited about doing it. Sure. Um, so this is another thing that Allison and I started a few years ago with the gleaning. And we have, um, this is a, is a really big community uh, component of it. We want our community to be our, in our school by building successful and sustainable farms to school program. These programs will engage students in food systems, change, keep money in the local economy, and reconnect the community to local foods and agriculture. So again, it's where does the food come from? We, the students go out, we collect the, the food that's left over after the farmer has sold everything they want. Uh, we've been to Dog River Farm twice, we went to the VTC Orchard and twice to Liberty Orchard and um, the food that we bring back, some of it stays here, the students can use it for a mystery box or cooking and then um, the Central Harvest Community Harvest of Central Vermont takes the rest and they distribute that to needy people in our community. So, um, you know, it's really working with the community and, um, and it's good for kids to feel like they're helping, like they contribute to their local community more than just something that they get for themselves. There's also a lot more we could be doing with the community as far as farm visits and all the science around life cycles and um, the bacteria, and we could be visiting you know, the compost centers. There's so much more that we could be doing out in the community. Of course, the challenge is that the buses are very expensive. So um, you know, that, that, that's the hardest part of this, is getting kids to 
out to the community. Bring some people in as much as we can. Okay, next slide. Um, so <laughs> this slide wasn't here a while ago, and last week when we met, we, I said uh, we were talking about food insecurity, what it looks like here. And I said, I'll go in the, in the cafeteria, and within, I was back in like three minutes. I just walked in, snap. There are, this is a typical lunchbox of, of many students, not all. Some bring healthy meals. But if they're not getting a food, uh, their food here, this is, that's it. It's empty calories, there's no nutrition there. It doesn't stick with you. Um, you know, and I think a slide coming up talks about how students are, well, you know what you feel like when you haven't had a decent meal for breakfast or lunch. You get the hangries, right? You get angry, you get hungry, and that happens, and our little guys are moving so quickly that if this is their lunch, um, then they're not happy in the afternoon, can't, not available to learn. <laughs> and one of the things that we learned at the Farm to School Institute, which was very moving to especially a lot of the teachers that went with us, was how food insecurity affects students' ability to be a productive community member in a school and to learn and create an environment where everyone has an opportunity to learn, whether it's those who are food insecure or not. And so that was a key component of Farm to School that not all of us really realized or thought about. And so that was one piece. So when um, some of the research that was presented at the uh, Farm to School Institute talked about, you know, these are some of, uh, of the effects of poor nutrition. You know, kids are being held back in grades, not so much here, but in, in some places, high absentee, tardiness, low grades, difficulty getting along, increased anxiety, you know, being angry, right? And many of the teachers have experienced a few of those off and on, and, and helping to understand why those might be happening is... So some of the positive things with students working in the garden and experiencing healthy foods, um, you know, there, there's fewer absences, um, better focus, um, better behavior in general, um, academic performance. When you're when you're nourished, you have energy to work. It's hard work learning, so you need proper nutrition. Um, fewer visits to the nurse because they feel better, and you know just getting along. The social skills. I mean, if you could see how students work together in the garden, it's just beautiful uh, to see how they are willing to work hard and. You know, you can see these little faces, that's real. They're really engaged. Um, is that mine again? Okay, I can jump in though. <laughs> so one of the things we are looking at as we are thinking about our that value statement that we started at the beginning, I'll think that how that's really interconnected with the wellness goals that, um, the, is, that are being created um, on a statewide and also on a district-wide level and how our farm to school efforts um, coincide with those and support those in particular. Anything else? I, to yeah, I just, um, you know, from the learning outcomes that are on the, that you all have seen and that are on the website, I, I should have done this, spend more time on it, but I just went through and highlighted a few things, like from these, the phys ed, uh, the physical education outcomes, you know, outdoor pursuits. Each one of these, there were so many that I could have highlighted almost the whole entire page. Positive change in the community. So this is not just the wellness goals. Positive change in community. Mm -hmm. um, with the economics, looking at humans, looking at environment and economy, the economic system, um, the market forces. So looking at you know how our community, what we produce here, right? It, instead of saying, well, someplace off in China, no, this is what we produce here. Um, economic decisions around that, um, making connections between molecules found in the food we eat and how they are rearranged to function within our human body. I mean, that's one of the science inquiry skills. Um, global issues of food around the world and comparing our foods to foods around the world, problem solving, data collection. I mean, it goes on and on, and it's all, it's all possible, and people are doing that in your school with the farm to school effort. Mm -hmm. Ah, good segue. <clears throat> so last summer, um, after the Farm to School Institute, one of our tasks was <clears throat> excuse me, to look at how um, Farm to School would support the teachers and what standards they have to teach. So we took one activity that happens, has happened since 2014 in every classroom. Every classroom gets assigned a garden bed, and they have to plan, maintain, <clears throat> plant, and harvest, and then prepare. And so we just 
briefly went through, all the, the standards were all new to us too, so it was a great opportunity, but we went through and science and math were easy. I mean, there's tons of things you could do. But then we looked at the transferable skills. We had creative thinking and problem solving, effective communication, engaged citizenship, independent and collaborative working. Um, so, and then, this doesn't even address all the artwork that the students do when they draw what they've harvested. You see beautiful images of, of these root vegetables in the classroom. Um, and then they write about their experiences. So there's a whole literacy component. PE, I mean, you saw the picture of the wheelbarrows. I mean, these kids, some of them, they've never even picked up a rake. You know, they've maybe had hand trials with big shovels. So they're learning. And some of the students, what I've noticed the most, that have the most difficult time in the classroom are the ones that excel out there. They become the leaders, they become the talkers, they become the problem solvers, and they become the teachers. And um, it's just wonderful to see that. So, good. so <clears throat> we decided to look at also and share with you what we are already doing and some of the things have been mentioned. And there's a few slides that I'll, I'll quickly say that we should add, but go ahead. <clears throat> so we've had the garden. Um, Cindy wrote the grant in 2012. Chris, you helped do the drawing, um, the design of it. It's 70 by 80 feet. Um, the perimeter of the garden is a living, um, we call it a living, living fence with um, fruit and um, fruit trees. I was going to say nut. One time I did buy, I bought, I was like, yeah, I got some hazelnut bushes. And the head custodian at the time, Gary, was like, nut? <laughs> and I was like, oh, shoot. <laughs> so they didn't get planted. But anyway, so this just, you know, an opportunity for life cycle. I mean, here you've got students from last year, they're planting, and then the kids are harvesting later on in, in the year. It's just a lovely um, process. And kids who are squirmish, you know, become less squirmish. Or kids who have Especially no, when they get involved with, with the worms. The worms. <laughs> so um, I wrote a grant in 2015, VEEP, so that we could have worm composters in each classroom and there's called vermicomposting with the red wigglers. And so the classroom snack waste can go in there. We can't take all of it. The worms can't handle all of it. So the rest goes to the, um, the uh, kitchen. Um, and then uh, last year, a grant from Center for Mont Solid Waste to build an outdoor composter, which will be piloted this spring, where we'll, the goal is to take one bucket of our um, food waste from the cafeteria and process it outside. So again, we're looking at trying to decrease, you know, to educate the kids about <clears throat> temperature will be so important for compost to be broken down. Why are we doing this? So it saves our school money, so we're not paying for that to be taken away. And then we would also don't have to buy our fertilizer. We can have our own. <clears throat> the gleaning you heard about, which is wonderful. And look at this, I mean, just, <laughs> they get free Thou rain. <laughs> thousands of pounds every season. It's amazing how many pounds 80 or 50 to 80 kids can get in a few hours. <laughs> they like 5,000 pounds of winter squash and 1,000 pounds of apples. They, they're good. Um, our healthy, healthy snacks program. So all these things that we're talking about are all grant funded. So this, again, gives opportunities for, yeah, uh, or donated from the community. And um, so exposure to raw food, you know, something that's not processed. The mystery boxes, which you heard about. It's the winter squash version. Mm -hmm. Yeah to cook them up and eat them afterwards. Um, for the last, since I think 2014, I want to say, we've had some kind of um, open house food-related activity in the fall. And last year, we decided that it would be um, a finger food snack from the garden. And each classroom would sign up for a different thing and have it prepared. And they were so proud to have it displayed and shared. And they knew everything about it, because they, they they did everything, so it was uh, an awesome opportunity for the community to see that what we're taking from our garden. Um, a grant was written years ago for a kitchen cart. It's almost better equipped than my kitchen. It's got a little, um, there's maple uh, sap that's being boiled in Cindy's room this year. So there's a hot plate. Um, there's Cuisinart's cutting boards for every child, you know, measuring cups, you know, the whole, everything you could think of, bowls for mixing. We also have a, a, bu a, um, a bucket of, um, you know, the standard flour, oil, salt and pepper, cinnamon, those kinds of things, herbs, so that teachers don't have to buy it. So what happens when schools buy local? We reinvest in our community. We are enabling um, farmers, young, young people in particular, that are getting into this field, to, um, 
you grow their business, the more we produce. And then our kids are eating more local food. And it's just a beautiful, it's a life cycle in and of itself that's just beautiful. The stats here say that in 2013 and 14, um, Vermont schools bought 5.6% of their budget. So wouldn't it be great to increase that even more? Mm -hmm. And so how you can get involved, um, we, there's, there's many different options. Um, so, oh, there's a few things I didn't, I forgot. Another grant that was written was there are reusables in every classroom. Every classroom has their own bin of um, cups and bowls and cutlery um, and a dish towel and a, two pans for um, cleaning their dishes and um, a hot tea kettle you know, so you can clean the water. So we are saving money by one, all the waste. Every child in the school has a birthday party here. <laughs> and we would be asking parents to donate all this paper, goods, and we don't do that anymore. Um, so that's just been a wonderful asset. And every teacher now has them. You know, if you need something, go get the, go get the spoons, go get the bowls. Um, so that's one. We have on the nature trail, so as far as like community engagement, so um, the signs are out there, were made by a parent that educates students. There's outdoor classrooms out there. I think Brandon started a little preschool corner. Um, and so it just, oh, when you think of, when I think about farm school, I think about it's like this overarching. When we had the mile track, you know, that was out there, that's, you know, how do we reach our, our wellness goals? And it's through engaging our bodies, and it doesn't have to just be the garden, it can be all things that are healthy. Um, so volunteering. Can I talk a little bit about the, mm -hmm. the other piece too is the, the orchard that's over here. Mm -hmm. So we have, I think there's seven or eight trees now. Um, we're working this year with uh, Barry Rotary Club. They are donating um, probably 14 more trees. 12 are going over here and a couple in the garden. And they are coming with the students from Central Vermont Career Center mm -hmm. to help us with yeah. the planting. Um, Bill, you were there one time yeah. when we first got yeah. the grant. We worked with um, Dave Wilcox, the state forester, and he was fantastic in educating the students about the roots of the tree and all the parts of the tree and how to plant the trees. So and those are apple trees. So those are apples. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so in the garden, there'll be fruit. There'll be two smaller fruit and yeah. apples over there, with the hope that somebody, you know, families can just go out and pick, and we can also have them here from the school. And we have two pears and two plum trees out there in the garden as well right now, and blueberries and. Gooseberries. So, and that same center, Central Vermont, no, Central Vermont Career Center, Amanda Garland is just phenomenal. You basically say, mm -hmm. got a project. So, their students are making signs for all of the plants that are on the periphery, all the trees and the bushes, and they'll be um, installed this year with um, classrooms mm -hmm. who have, would like to be part of that. So, just a, yeah, just a few different yeah. ways that people can get involved, and mm -hmm. wanted to share that all that information with you yeah. as the. Is there any follow-up questions, anything we didn't cover, anything that was unclear? I just want to thank you guys for some wonderful, wonderful asset. Yeah, I, I would echo what, what Carol said. I mean, thank you. It's, I mean, I see it. I've seen it. Cindy, you talked about one time I've been here, but our other time, but it's just full, filled with children out there in the garden, and there. I agree there. It's very impressive as far as the amount of grant writing that everybody has done. I don't know that it's one person, so I'll say that everybody has done. <laughs> it's mostly Cindy and Meg. And it's been spread over a few years and all, which I think helps keep the enthusiasm and the engagement um, going with it. It's just so wonderful to see the program be one that continues to grow. It hasn't just stopped at a certain level mm -hmm. and the amount of involvement with community yeah. um, that's just so fantastic so. yeah well the institute was great in helping us rejuvenate up those things and getting some support from other places that we can keep getting potentially um, without necessarily even having that grant mm -hmm. so. I mean, you might not realize it Vera, but I think it goes back to you the year that you asked to have a summer program because there was there were programs for students, but there wasn't anything here. And Chris said, "Well, let's make it happen." So we did a little Math Monday, and the kids came, and we did a tiny little garden out here, and it kind of started way. That was a long time ago. Emily was in third grade. Yeah, and I think another thing is that Chef Austin has been open to the program this year, 
mm -hmm. which is a much stronger um, commitment on his part than we've seen in the past. Yeah, and he's he's just mm -hmm. he's just getting started. Yeah. <laughs> One cool thing you'll notice in the, the menus that are happening is that the mm -hmm. food will be labeled. So yeah, we're, we defined local. Yeah, we oh, defined gosh. some labeling. So he's about to start incorporating. So we'll have the Berlin or town label for anything we get from Berlin, which he's hoping to start doing from some local farms. He's working on the proper procurement methods to do that. And we're working with the state people to make sure that's all done properly. Um, and then also um, local, which would be some, anything in Washington County, and regional, which would be Vermont and surrounding states. So there's a lot of things he's already purchasing that would fall into those categories, and we want to share that and promote the fact that we're already purchasing those things because that's sort of what, you know, the hood milk that we get is regional, so that we would incorporate and, and share that with the parents so they understand yeah, where the food I, is coming I, from. And I know that that was a 2013-2014 statistic you had up there, Meg, but Reinhardt, who's our main food supplier, um, they do a lot of stuff that comes out of the state of Vermont. Yeah, they do, definitely. And, and so when you see the truck come up, you might think, well, is that all coming from somewhere else mm -hmm. outside the state? A lot of it isn't. I don't have the percentage, but I know yeah. we've had yeah. those conversations. And Brian, who's up at U32, is the head of the food program, used to work for Reinhardt, mm -hmm. and he's now been two years with us. And I mean, I know that's something he watches up there. So. And if you happen to be here in the morning to hear the morning announcements you'll learn about proper nutrition and read because um, Austin's providing facts for Lori to read over. I've learned a few things. I'm like, help, help I me <laughs> Specifically, I mean the whole variety, and there probably are other things like Carol just said that you didn't mention. Oh yeah, there's the, lots of things. The mystery box and the taste samples and all, mm -hmm. and some things have kind of come back around. I remember when we used to have a um, sandwich bar in the cafeteria. It was a big deal as far as having taste tests, so kids realized that the. Uh, bread that they thought was chocolate wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> it was pumpernickel. The, the, the possibilities are endless. Mm -hmm. well, one way to get them to pumpernickel. Thank, thank, you thank you all for coming. Thank you. 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 Can you send it to me or we can somehow we can get that door? Yeah, I'll have, um, nice yeah, I'll have. Yeah, let me just get, I'll have Alice do that, yeah. Our technical Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Well, next up on our agenda is item 3.2, the board goals and work plan. We all had the homework assignment of taking a look at those over the last month and, um, thinking about any changes we would make to those. It looks like they were last updated in 2016, so it's been a couple of years, but I do see, so I've, and then looking through them myself, I noticed some things that are from, I'm sure, the first time that we put these together, which was probably four or five years ago. Um, so we could definitely use some updating. Push it twice. Push it oh, yeah. thank you. <laughs> Does anyone have any suggestions on how we go through this? I mean, do we just start start with page one and work our way through? Or I'm open to other suggestions if you want to tackle it in a different way. Well, I'm not sure if anybody can give me a little bit more background as far as these goals, because I know they were brought up a few months ago, and I, I didn't add in anything. I said I felt that I was too new to actually say anything about them. But I've read them multiple times now. And what's not clear to me is they don't really read as goals. It reads more of like an action plan. Because where it says goal one, academic and behavior learning, that's not a goal. That, that's more of a statement. I mean, a goal is something where you can measure it in some way. Um, you know, fiscal, fiscal isn't a goal. You might say you want to keep the budget within a 2% increase or develop a capital budget plan, but just saying fiscal is not really a goal. So I'm a little confused mm -hmm. how these work. But Bill can probably help here. I may have been the only one who was on the board when we did these. Maybe Vera? Yeah, I, yeah. I know Vera's been And I'm been not a fan of the way that these yeah. are laid out yeah. by I, any I means. think we kind of, we tried to break them into categories. So fiscal is more a description of the, of the category. 
and then we described what our current state is, what our desired state is, and what we would need to do to get from current state to desired state. But I, too, am not really tied to what we've got here, and I think that's why we're looking at them again. Well, and, you, and maybe, Bill, you could speak to yes. why these are important and what you would like well, to get. I don't know. I don't know the, what, let me talk to you about it in general. Um, for me, goals, one of the things that um, has been an objective for me is to get clear um, direction from the boards about what's the work the board wants to do. And so um, there's been different, with different boards, they have different levels of which they commit to their goals and the work in which they do. And different boards write their goals in different ways. Um, not, they almost all use this format here, but just as you said, Corinne, there would be a statement or a rationale right with the goal piece of it. But I don't, as, the, as your superintendent, I don't write these goals. I don't go and take information and rewrite them for you. That's never been something that's been asked of me to do. I can do it if the board would so like me to, because I would say that you have to have, where I heard you going is something that's, in, um, you want to make sure there are five or six different attributes of a goal to make it a good goal. And first one, it's got to be understandable. And that's where I heard you talking to from Corinne. And then I heard you talking about how are we measuring it? Because you said, you know, certain percentage, you were just, I, I didn't, re keep everything you said, but that, those are the tenants I heard. So we could, and, and you may have heard about an acronym of what's called a SMART goal. Uh, it's, it's a way of remembering what those six tenants are of a goal that you should be writing. And then from there, the pieces that are under here is current state, desired state, and actions needed by the board. I've, had, I've worked for some boards, I've worked with, uh, and partnered with boards that they made goals, but it was really goals for me or the organization, but not what the board would do. And so for me, this was something that we started about five or six years ago to know what the board would do and knew what the board actions were. So because what this did was then take from the goals for you to say, can you really do all that board? And then when you go from the goals, go to a, a yearly calendar, that's something that's a table like this, that I wish I, I and I could bring it up, I could bring up my laptop and show you from U32 what their goals are and then the details that are under each month of what they're going to do. And that basically builds the agenda. And that's the work of the board meetings. There's not much else that comes up in the meetings because that's the work of the board for the year. So those are, um, and that, and to be frank about it for Berlin, this has really been fits and starts. We haven't had a good, I, I haven't seen the board, not because of any Ill, Ill will intent, but just say, we want to get to that place where we have goals, we have action steps, we calendar, that determines our meetings, we do our work there or in between. And um, we have three three or four boards that are good with that, and we have a couple boards that don't do that. So, I, and, and I don't um, pressure the boards either way. I think it's just a better way of determining the work and how we're moving forward and being clear about who needs to be done, what, and what supports need to be there. So. Bill, sometimes yeah. I, I mean, I've been here for four years now watching the, the, and I kind of wonder if it would help, like, looking at the district and what, and maybe reflecting on some of the things that um, are placed in, in this um, work that's being done district-wide to move the students forward academically. And that might help at least with the academic goals. And if you look what Bill was saying, there is a plan each year that is in place. And I've been thinking about this, and I saw that you all had this on the agenda for tonight. And I hope, well, oh, sorry, I, sorry, I hope this isn't overstepping, but I was thinking, you know, if I was not aware or, you know, entrenched every single day in the work that Bill and the administrative team and all the educators here in this uh, SU have been trying to move forward, then it would be hard for me necessarily as a board to be able to wrap my head around what do I need to do to support this work. And so I hope it's okay, Bill. Yeah, no, it's fine. I was thinking that this might be a place for you all to start at least for the academics 
it's planned out year by year as to what should be fully in place and what is just being implemented. Mm -hmm. So if you are looking at this and you're saying as a board, what do we need to support the school? You might be able to look and say, okay, so next year we have these in place. It might be to continue to support that work so that it is continued to be strengthened. Is there a financial need or is there any kind of need? And then looking at the other two, which is clear learning targets or performance indicators, what kinds of things could we do to support this work to move the academics forward? And that is something that's in this, but then you could also talk to me, you could talk to Billy, you could probably talk to any of the educators here and get some clarification if you didn't understand what's in this document. It's also on the board, uh, on, this, on the um, SU board um, website. Very clear information on that. So I, I, I was talking to someone today and they said tonight they're going to be talking about their goals. And I said it's kind of like they're spinning and I thought maybe this might help at least with the academics because this is what the teachers are going for. This is what the whole SU is going for. And so if you use this as a base and say, that how can we support this work, that, that might be a help. I don't know. I mean, Thanks, the, pri the primary goal is what was adopted for me, is that what the boards adopted in May 2016, that all students will meet the student learning outcome. That's what you told us as a board. Berlin adopted that then. And then there was a discussion about that up at a WCSU meeting as far as is it realistic to say all? What does that mean? So until, I don't know if there's been any further. Until I'm told differently, I'm taking what was adopted, yeah. which means every student to earn a U32 diploma has to meet every student learning outcome. But so you guys kind of addressed what my question was but not totally in that I guess I'm still confused over, and it sounds like maybe there's a combination of whether these are our board goals or whether they are principal or superintendent so, goals. No, these are board goals. These are what you want to do as a board. Can I say for me, and I've been on the board a long time, and this is the part that always seems to get a little stuck in the mud. It's the monitoring part. I think it's hard to monitor something when we're not in the trenches every day. And we put the calendar in the board goals as a work plan. Mm -hmm. But then when I was just going back through these, there's a lot of things. And I can't speak from October prior, mm -hmm. but from October on, or November on, that we haven't either discussed or had presentation or gotten the data. So to monitor something that we, we don't have the information for, I find is the difficult part. Well, and the monitoring, that's where to me it gets to the policies, as far as if we don't have what all the policies and procedures are to know for sure what it is you're supposed to be monitoring, how can you do that? Because a, a lot of this type of work is related to what do our policies say. So I would agree with that. I would say that our policies don't really say what we're monitoring, our current policies. I would agree with that. Um, they don't say it all. I, I'd almost say that. Um, I would say you're right, Vera, and we haven't gone back to that calendar. And it's a lot of because of what comes back into the agenda building. And what, what is important at that time versus staying in the boards that have completed these work plans successfully, their chairs, not, and I'm, I'm not gonna take any credit for it because the chairs always come back and pull this out and say, what are we doing next month? And they start right from there when we start the discussion. And it's a commitment from those boards saying that's what we're gonna use to drive our agenda. And there's, there's other things we're just gonna let, let the administration take care of. So what does it mean for you all when you've got a couple of boards that don't 
define their goals very well and don't necessarily give you much direction from their goals. It sounds like Carol says she fills in the gap by looking at things like this and working. We do with that. You. We're on that all the time at the leadership team. And we're, I think there isn't a meeting that isn't out in some form or another. No. Again, so I was saying this might be if you're looking for how to support the school. This, you know, what can we do as a board to support the school? This mm -hmm. is, and this is this this um, timeline and this information. This is what Bill is going to be reporting and. Aaron, the new principal and such, will be reporting on growth towards this. That's what we were using when we wrote our CIP and we're continuous improvement plan. Yeah. And the continuous improvement plan that's coming up, which will be uh, new. It changed because it went from no child left behind to every student succeed. Zach. And so, <laughs> can't keep up with it. So um, the CIP that was written is based on mm -hmm. this. So a, all, a lot of the work, all the work we're doing is to meet this. So I would assume that as a school board, your focus on your work would be how to best support the school and the district to move forward in this work that was adopted by you all back in 2016-17. So it was just a thought. I was trying to think of a way that might help, and I thought of this. So I would answer your question this way, that um, with board goals, with a board calendar, there's a lot more proactive thinking and thoughtful about the, all the meetings instead of a meeting-to-meeting -meeting vision. When you don't have something like this, it becomes a little bit more reactive, and definitely, I don't think there's much continuity from one meeting to the next. And that's what I notice from sitting with the different boards yep. that use it to the different amounts they do. I'll just say that looking, looking back on some of these four or five years ago, whenever it was that we did this, there was a real concern about disruptive behavior in the classroom. There was a real concern about the state of the building. And so we're, we're doing better, I think, in those areas because we defined those as goals and decided to focus on them some. Academic, I, I, I'm, I don't know. I mean, I, without the monitoring, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure where we are. Yes, Matt. Yeah, I don't know if I... I could speak maybe for a minute just because this came up at the WCSU sure. meeting also. Um, I have to apologize, I have a cold, so my ability to be coherent may be even less uh, than it is usually. But, um, you know, I think that the my sense has been that the issues you're discussing now is sort of like, have we had goals? What are they? Are they really measurable? What are we doing here? Like, what are we, you know, I think those are really across the, the WCSU school system. I, I see boards grappling with those questions. Um, and I think that the the topic that we discussed at the SU meeting around goals and, and the activity that we did to try to prioritize topics was specifically designed to try to try to start wrapping our heads collectively around those questions. And I think that some of the, the items that were prioritized are very much in line with what you've been discussing. So one was board governance. So how do we operate, you know, how, how do we um, conduct our meetings, you know, sort of what do we put at the top of the priority list and what don't we, these kinds of things. One was board monitoring, which I think you could speak to, you know, how are we asking the leadership team, um, how, does, how are the boards gonna know, basically, if these goals are being met or if the implementation plan is being executed or if student, if we're improving in terms of student outcomes and these kinds of things. Um, and then the third was community engagement. So, you know, all everyone sort of feeling this um, imperative in some way to try to get better and more strategic about um, engaging the communities in which we, which we serve. Um, so I would just highlight that, that, you know, as a, as a set of boards and as one SU board, you know, we did prioritize those three things already. I think that the hope that was expressed at that meeting was that, um, you know, the, the district boards would consider at least perhaps 
um, the notion of adopting those goals in common across the SU, um, acknowledging that you know each school might have another one or two things that they want to specifically focus on that are critical to that that building or that uh, uh, yeah that building. Um, so now that's all very general. Uh, I do want to note that um, I feel like this where we are at is trying to figure out almost at a meta level what are we even talking about when we talk about goals and how are we going to go about setting them and how are we going to go about monitoring them. So it's really a conversation, I think, for the next year, quite honestly, about what do we mean when we talk about these things and what do we, what do we think is important. Um, and so I think the goals themselves will reflect that to some extent. They may be at a very high level. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the intent is for the executive committee to you know, do some work in April and May and hopefully get something out to the district boards to look at before the June 6th carousel meeting so that we can come together as a, as a, as a group and maybe vote or decide on something there. Um, so I'm sorry I just talked for a really long time. Um, <laughs> But I just wanted to note, I guess, that there is this at the, you know, the executive committee has been talking about this a lot. Um, and I think every board, you know, I've attended every, every board in the last, every board meeting in the last uh, six weeks, and it comes up every time. Um, so I just wanted to note that, you know, you're not in a vacuum here. Everybody's talking about the same thing. Thank you. Yeah, so. yeah, thanks for the perspective. Does that change our discussion at all? No, I, what, what I need as a board member, mm -hmm. I'd like to think other board members need it too, is I need to know that I do have a complete set of policies and procedures so I know what we're working with. There's also training, not just for me individually, but to develop as a team. I feel like when I got on the board, although I had an idea of how things work, there wasn't really anything that I was handed or any specific things that I was told you need to do or we need to work on, on this together. And the last few years, this board has seen a lot of people coming and going. So I don't really feel like there's really been a lot of team development or, or you know, I think all the classrooms have stuff as far as checkoffs, as far as at the beginning of the year, this is happening. At the end of the year, this is happening. Well, where where is it for the board members to know what we should be aware of. Um, and and I, the student stuff is really important to me, but a lot of that is mentioned here, and so I really feel like somehow we're going we're gonna to address that. I was trying to address some stuff that I, I didn't feel was really mentioned here. As far as with public engagement, again, the difference to me, whether it's goal setting or not, to me, public engagement seems like it would be more of part of our mission is to be engaging the public. Um, and then it gets down to how. But a lot of that stuff you can't necessarily measure. You can do an awful lot of reach out and offer things. And that doesn't mean people are going to engage and take advantage of it. And therefore, how do you measure it if there have been no changes? One, one specific thing for the community, which there has been some in the past, and I don't think there currently is, is to make more of an effort to engage the entire community with education, knowledge, skills. There was a point where we had um, some evening things that were available to whether it be parents or community on, on technology and, and parenting things and so forth, which I don't think I saw anything like that mentioned in here, just kind of a more general engage the community. But and, and the only other thing is where it says at the bottom of all these actions needed by board, I was really unclear. I, I, there's a lot of red underlines here. I'm really unclear what if any of those things have happened or if they're in the process or who's, who's responsible. Mm -hmm including one of them was about um, improving the website, which has come up several times in the last few months. But it's another one of those things where like, we know it needs to be done, but it's the how is it going to get done? When is it going to be done? Mm -hmm. That's what I feel like we're missing yeah. to understand it. Yeah, those are all good points. And I think, um, Bill, you, you, you nailed it when you said it's, we're, we're, 
feels like to me, now that you say it, we, we're, we do seem to operate on more of a meeting to meeting kind of what's coming up next without, mm -hmm. without a, lot of, a lot of planning. And Carol described it as, as spinning a little bit. And um, we have revisited these goals many, many times and, and not done much to them, just tweaked them around the edges a little bit. And then we set them aside and don't look at them again for, for quite a while. Can My piece is, no, oh, sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. It's a decision you need to make as a board about how you're going to operate. As Chris brought up governance, it's really one for you to decide as a board. How do you want to use your agendas? And what's your primary focus, primary work as a board? Um, and that's what you need to determine. And um, Carol and I can serve you in either mode. Um, I think for a board to think about what is our long term and, you know, it also talks about those roles and relationships and where this fit. So I think I, some of where we spin our wheels is I'm not a I'm not truly like a fan of the way these are laid out per se. Because I think it is one of those documents that we look at it, say, yep, they're good and we move on to the next month's um, issues. I do think though that the board as a whole, as a whole, um, and I'll even go back to, you know, when we first started looking at some board goals, it's we really have to dig in and say, okay, we're going to set a couple hours to building our board goals and really, you know, whether we each work on all the goals or each of us take a goal and like really dig into what. Um, what we as the board are going to support, what we're going to monitor, and how we're going to monitor it, for me, is the most important part of a goal. And whether it's stated as a goal or just a statement, that to me is not a huge part. It's the other pieces of what we want for a goal. A goal. And I, I think being um, broad sometimes is okay, but I think sometimes we're so broad that it just goes from year to year to year with not any like, okay, so we start a genius hour this year. How can we as a board support the staff with something new and, you know, how can we make sure the children in three, four, five, six are getting out of this, what the time that they're spending on it? And I'm just using this for an example, like how do we not micromanage it, but over like monitor it enough that we know that it's going in the right direction, it's a good thing to take on, that it's the right direction for the school to support, and if it's a, a financial need to, you know, buy something that the classrooms might need for it to support it, you know, what does that look like? How is that going to work? And whether it's, you know, a different science piece or, you know, any academic piece. I'm just using Genius Hour for an example that. I'm not sure that along the way all board members have know how all the pieces work at the different age level in the classrooms. That's true. And I mean that I know you're using Genius Hour as an example. I think it's about it's a discussion that we have. Um, Thank you. Is to <laughs> what level is the right level for board right. goals? Because I would think that whether it's Genius Hour or Farm to School or any program that you can pick that happens in the school, what's the reason to do that? Right. And that's to me, it's probably a broader area of how do we make sure we're, we're engaging all learners? Yeah. So I really think as much as we say it's board goals, to me it really is collaborative everybody's goals. It's got to be our goals to an extent, but then it's got to be what the staff here wants and the administration can support. I mean, it really has to be a collaborative work. Because if it were for me and the only one to, I'm going to tell you that plan right there. I'm going to go right back to what Carol pitched. Which that plan is a good plan, but I do think in, and maybe I'm speaking at a place, um, but I think each building has specific things or requests or wants 
Yeah, I'll bring up the, the two examples that I brought up earlier. That was four years ago, but at that time we were really struggling, I think, with behavior and with the facility. And so we wanted to make those priorities. Right. And, and the team here did a great job in carrying that out and following through, and we've seen a lot of improvement in both of those areas. Bill, are there other other boards that um, you think would be a good example for us to look at? And I know we're doing the SU wide work mm -hmm. in those three those three big categories that covers a lot of what what we yeah, have I, here well, in a different way. Well, I always have kind of wondered the fiscal piece if that's really a goal or if that's a duty. Frankly, mm -hmm. you know um, the. Yeah. You know, when I think about those, the for me, that's that's when I've always asked about. Um, Callus has done a great job using theirs, and I can show you their goals and their calendar. I've got those. I've got all of them. U thirty two and East Montpelier as well. Um, they they really try to use those to sit and say, and East Montpelier, everyone's in that point of cycling right now through or how are we redoing this uh, we're trying to get more to a March to March timeline because that's the board calendar mm -hmm. um, so um, we're having more of those discussions right now than we have but you know it, it, it keep, it's kept moving back in the past six years since I started here from like a September August September discussion to okay let's move it back closer to what the board timeline mm -hmm. is which it makes a lot of sense to me that way because mm -hmm. You don't necessarily know who's, what the board composition is going to be after a town meeting. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the, are there things that come in? Yes, they do. I mean, it's, it's not saying the whole book agenda is that way, but it's a good way of asking what are you trying to do. And I'm always someone who used to try to do everything that has learned less is more. So the fewer things you have is better. Because uh, in organizational management and organizational change theory and um, individual for students as well so when I think about it from all the way from an organization to individuals the fewer things you try to do and the deeper you go gets the bigger overall change for either individual or organizational growth so if you say these are all the things we're going to try to do um, it usually doesn't get you that far down the road so I'm always a fan of a fewer things going really deep. And so, um, like U32 this year, this past year, their goal was to really understand the implementation plan. So they, every other meeting, cycle in and out of one of the three three objectives that are on the in the implementation plan. And they sit and talk about it. And what does this really mean? And what does that mean for our system? Um, they also had one for community engagement, which has started the different ways that they've engaged uh, folks. They, they, I think they'd be the first to say, we don't feel like it's everything, but it's the best, it's where they've gotten to. Um, and, and those have been the other two pieces. Callus was really about, um, was really trying to understand how Callus wanted to respond to Act 46. That was our main goal. Great. East Montpelier was supporting their MTSS. Sorry. Yeah, that's okay. I just wanted to make sure I understood where you were coming from on the policies and what you, what spe specificity you're looking for out of the policies to help guide you. To know what they all are. And there's some right now, there's not only some of the recent ones that just haven't been made available. I mean, ones that the committee that you've been on has passed, but yet they're not out there yet. I mean, I might have a copy from some board packet, but it's not the copy that says adopted, blah, blah, to make sure that there were no changes in it. Um, but then there's some older ones where I guess part of the question is, are they still policies? And if you don't know whether or not something is a policy or if it's just a title that you're seeing and you don't know if there's any policy related to it or not, 
it's really hard to know if something about that comes up in conversation. Do we have a policy to look at or not? I, I didn't think when I first asked about them in September that it was anything more than asking for something and, you know, scans or copies would be made and or I'd go to the website and, and I'd have it. I had no idea that it would it would be a challenge to get a complete set. So are we, what do you think we're looking at here? Starting from scratch, working with what we've got, um, keeping uh, up to date on the executive committee's work and the SU board's work on the, the three areas that Matt mentioned. I'm open to suggestion on these. I think experience tells us that these, the, the way that we wrote these, it's almost, I, I don't know, it wasn't that useful. Um, it, it prompted discussion and it did prompt a little bit of action in certain areas, but I don't see them as a, uh, a uh, living document we can <laughs> keep referring to. No, and I, 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 I believe from different perspectives that each one of these are, they're important. And I, I still believe that our classrooms here at Berlin still have some behavior issues. Mm -hmm. And I think, I, I don't know when the last update was to the board. Um, I, I, I'm here and I have, you know, Alyssa coming home and behaviors and disruptions are still happening and often. So I think, um, for me, academic is, it's with behavior, but I think it really needs to be two separate goals for me. And I also believe that, um, I mean, I, I feel like fiscal is definitely a responsibility. I'm not sure that that's a goal, unless there's specific guidance, like Corinne had said, with keeping a budget under 2% or something like that. Um, we're past the bond stuff, so I'm not sure that we always are going to be looking at the financial piece and always going to try to be as fiscally responsible as we can. And I think a lot of um, that one, it, it's more embedded in what our role is as a board. The public engagement, again, is important. But I, I guess for me, I'd rather focus on the academic one, behavior, and um, policy. What are the three, again, that the WCSU board? There's Academic board, board governance, which includes a... Oh, includes, board governance would be another includes one. Includes a board policy. development component, which is what Corinne was talking about, which is, you know, how do we orient new board members? How do we, what kind of training do we want to provide to board that members? That one would be that actually that a big one for, for me. There's board monitoring, which is how do we know, you know, how are we asking the school system to um, report to the boards? Um, how yeah, do we know that we can measure what we want to measure? Um, you know, and un so measure. under that one, I had check-in systems, how often, who does them when, and the monitoring right. system. And I can I, tell you the best that we can give is like three times a year. Yeah. That's at best. Right now we're struggling. We're going to have one in may for a student for our academics but that's a second that's really the what we have is the october and that one i would love to see be able to happen at our su meetings because to me there that's something the report out piece of so many things can be done at the su level and then you have your breakout meetings you know to further conversations or ask more in-depth questions per building but I, I'm still, I feel like that's one that could easily be, easily be consolidated into an SU. That's what we did in October. Meeting. Just like that. Yeah, I totally agree. And I, I yeah. Um, I also just want to mention, because it occurred to me that policies, I think, is also part of board governance. 
And There's so our, much under board. What measures. is our policy about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a lot of that. And, and I, I think, honestly, we don't have a lot to find about. Our policies are a mess. Yeah. They are. They're really, really. And that's the only way I can, because there is no place that has one central repository for policies. And policies has always been a struggle. Yeah. From 10 yeah. years ago right. when I first yeah. started yeah. on the board, it's and, and, always And I asked, I asked the executive committee, was it March? Or was it February? I don't remember. Mark, I think, yeah. I said to the executive committee, so what's our level of importance with policies? Because the policy committee has gone through the required ones. Do we want consistent ones for the others? And do we want to blitz it and say, let's go find everything and do it once? Or, or is it going to be, uh, you know, is it going to be six different ways of doing this? And the system doesn't have the capability. It does have the capability. It's where do we take the resources from if we do it six different ways? And is there really that that push and pull with the six different? There is. Absolutely. Yep. It comes up every every month. I can yeah, and I've seen it already. Um, it's interesting. <laughs> I I guess and what I would um humbly ask, I guess. Um, and I, I just want to say that the Doty Board has not had goals, I believe, for the last couple of years. No, you had them for the first, uh, first three years. You were the SU Board has not had goals at all uh, that I'm aware of. I represent both those goals, or those boards, rather. Um, and I can tell you literally that it makes my skin crawl um, not to have, that's just the kind of person I am. I want to know what we're doing. I want to know how we're going to know whether or not we succeeded. Um, I want everybody to be on the same page. Um, so that makes me crazy. Um, I guess what I'm asking is um, the, and that's why the very first meeting, the SU meeting that I was, you know, chairing, I, I insisted that that be part of the a major part of the agenda. And it will, I, I can guarantee you, be a major part of the agenda for the executive committee in trying to take that input from the SU board and, and tee it back up for the SU board at, at the June meeting. Um, so with humility, I guess I would ask um, if, you know, you, you're willing to let that play out, you know, I, I, I want to, Chris is on the executive committee. Um, there's a representative from every board on it. Um, so I'd love to see what we can maybe do to come back to you with you know something that's addressing the concerns that you're expressing and and allows all of us to kind of maybe latch on to something that will represent forward progress in the next year so. well no matter what happens with anything i'm really i think i just heard you say a minute ago bill that there are issues with a lot of boards policies which I wasn't aware of that. <laughs> I was much more concerned with ours than, than anybody else's. Um, and it doesn't really matter when or how it happened, but my husband and I don't recall them being such an issue in years past. But if, if people are going forward and discussing what's it called policy governance, board mm -hmm. governance, whatever you're calling it, how can you even discuss that if you don't know where the current policies are at. So it just seems like in order to go forward, even with that goal, everybody needs to know for sure what they have with policies. Well, maybe that's, a, a, maybe the goal then has to be assessing the current state of affairs and making sure that every board, all the boards, know what is the state of our policies, where the discrepancies are, and what our priorities are for addressing those. So, in order. I, I'm trying to think of the right way to say this. Can so I please say something don't. While you're yeah, go ahead. Okay, so a little history of the policy from the time that I was on the policy. And of course, I mean, it's an ever-changing. Like, how can we best get everybody's input and get the policy? And it felt like every school wanted if one word changed for each of their towns. So for a little while, we tried to do it in Google Docs, and different schools were assigned different colors and many other changes, but I feel like that kind of was the start of when things it was started stopped. to go 
yeah. like really wrong because then they weren't being printed out and <coughs> what actually was getting in one packet might not have incorporated somebody else's changes because there was a glitch like I kind of feel like that was where things were going wrong so could somebody tell me what what is the actual procedures now for the policy committee so the, when since the time I can remember sitting at the table for two years Stephen, I'm going to get this history is important to understand, at least from my perspective, is that we realize in doing it within, within my first year to the beginning of the second year, somewhere that we did an analysis of all the policies and said, there was a policy committee said to me, which ones are required? Brought the list of, at that time, whatever it was, it's now 28. Where are we on those? Lots, we did literally, we literally have a table that Chris has seen a lot of that has this table that said, these are the schools that have them and these are the ones that don't and this is how old they are. So four years ago, the policy committee said, let's get all the required ones and make sure they stay within five years of review. Mm -hmm. So it literally took until this year to do that work. Um, and so we did and a lot of it is the tug, the pull and tug. The, a good example of that is the firearms policy, weapons policy, where there were people would not come into alignment of what they want for a weapons policy. What's really helped us fast forward, and we've done the majority of the work in the past two years, is the policy committee saying, we're not going to write policy from required. We're going to take the BSBA draft, and there has to be a, there has to be a good reason why we want to change from that. So pretty much that's come on. And that's really accelerated our work. Because before it was all this back and forth, just as you said, Vera, of uh, what do we want, what do we want in this policy? I also, um, Corinne, you're the first board member that's really pushed me on policies. No one's ever done that before, to really say, what are our policies? I agree with you of, like, we have to know what our policies are. I still, to this day of six years, don't know where there's a repository and we spent a whole summer, I put a person on it for a whole summer trying to figure it out. So it, that's why I say it, the way it is is the way it is. I think it needs to be a lot clearer of what the work we need to do there. And I will, the reason I, I am a big fan of, of good governance, and good governance means you use your policies to drive your work. There's three or four different models. Policy governance means the one we hear a lot about. Here we could go look at the United Way model. They have a model of, of a governance, which I like a lot too, um, where you use those. And it's very clear about the monitor, but it's also very clear about the roles, who has what roles, and who does the different monitoring for different types of policies. Because it's not just all fall on the superintendent or the administration. It falls onto board members to do that work too. Um, so I just kind of give you that as a state of where we are at and that um, it's hard to, to give you a full sentence. I don't well, know where there is it, it's a It's a two-part thing, though, because it's not just do we know if the policy exists, whether it was rescinded, what, whatever terminology, and it might vary for the different ones, but then it's the website piece of it, because the website is where I was first steered to go to get the policies. And seems to be a little bit of confusion as far as whether or not the ones that have been um, approved more recently um, by the WCSU, whether those are just going at the WCSU spot or on the individual um, school district sites also. But still, so it's one step to know whether or not there is a policy or have had one just recently approved. And then it's another step as far as getting it on the website where it can be found and making sure the table of contents is up to date and actually making sure that the policies are in order so they're easy to find. And, it, and that all sounds like simple stuff, but when you put it all together, it's really not as simple as it seems to be. It's, you know, even that great spreadsheet that I saw once a few months ago, and maybe it's been updated since, but 
even that wasn't totally accurate when I was looking between that and the website and what I had in my binder that I had put together. And so, you know, all I want to do is have everybody on the same page. That's all I want to do. And, and I'll be really frank, the easiest way to do that, one set of policies for the whole issue. One set of policies. So as a board, how can we, how can we support that? Other than bring that to your other boards and say we'd like to see one set of policies for this SU because all our kids end up at the same place, and that there aren't individual policies. I gave the reason I gave examples in the executive committee packet for March of two individual board policies. I don't know if that's. I'm assuming that's okay because that's the way we've been operating, but I don't know the answer really to that. So, Bill, though, there's more than what you just said. Though it's not just getting everybody on the same page saying we're willing to have one set of policies, it is still finding out what do we have for policies because we need to know if it's already been rescinded, if it should be rescinded, and to get what's on the websites current. So there, there's still more than just saying we all need to agree on having one set. I agree, but I don't know but, what the target is right now, Corinne. Well, and that that's when we're saying how are we going to do it, if there's more than just saying we all need to agree to but that's where we start. You can't do it without sure. that. You gotta right? start I mean, you, gotta, you have to do that first. And then we can well, say, well, where are we actually? And we can answer that question. And then we can move on from there. Where do we want to be? You know, we just methodically move through those questions. You know, well, it, starts, it starts with, as you said, the commitment. Whether or not we agree to it, we still need to know where all our policies are at. Whether or not we agree to all have one set of policies, we still need to know. It may be a chicken and egg question, but what I would say is that without a common expression of, of everyone saying we need a set of unified policies, we'll never get one. You know what I'm saying? So like, I'm just trying to. Yeah. I hear that. Is um. So I guess for me, for a closing statement on policies, is it yeah, possible? Yes. Yeah. Is it possible to? I know you said there is a spreadsheet, and I know I've seen the spreadsheet mm -hmm. for sure. Um, is there, who is it at central office that's kind of overseeing? Krista does all the policy she does. work. Okay. And along with lots of other things. I mean, it, it's an ebb and flow. It's, you know, she and I talk, we talk about what's on the list. Um, I can, I'll, because I haven't seen that list for a while. It's been a while. Yeah. So I'll email her. I don't think it's updated for this year. I can tell you. I, you something. usually update it once a year. We um, don't keep it updated all the time. I would say for policies, though, it sounds like there's many, whether it's the executive committee, the full board as a whole, and individual boards, it's one of those that seems to be up and pressing in most boards. I, I haven't heard many other boards really express it to me. No? Okay. All right. So back to board goals. We allotted an hour for that. We're running up against that. Um, what is the? You haven't heard much from Eric on anything. I'm trying to take it all in. I look at him once in a while. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I have a, a book of policies. <laughs> They're obviously different than, you know, what entails here. So I'm still trying to wrap my head around everything. I mean, I understand what you're saying. Vera, I agree with a lot of stuff she said. Um, Matthew's been really informative to me, at being so new. I just, I'm taking everything in that I can. I do, I think we just, we need to start somewhere. I, I think, um, I don't think the best place for central office to spend their time is going back, you know, six, Plus years, however many years, trying to figure out where a policy ended up. Right. I, I just don't think um, if the VSBA has the guidelines, here's the required policies. Maybe it's best that if it's at this point moving forward, this is what's required. This is what we have. Is there a blanket like we rescind you all can, other yeah. policies and we're starting fresh? So there are starting some fresh from here. Yeah, there, I mean, there's some boards in this state that they do it once a year and they just use the template of what's required and recommended from the VSBA, and there it goes. And they they do that. They do it's just that. a thought. I'm just thinking yeah. out loud to kind yeah, of work us through this. You know, mm -hmm. let's start from somewhere. Let's start with what's required. And 
I would love to say that other boards would do the same thing. So we're all on the same page as much as possible. And then literally rescind anything from that point. And if we have specific policies from that point that we want, we can work forward. But I don't think that to have somebody literally go through minutes of what was rescinded and when, and if it's not a required policy, I'm not sure that's the best use of anybody's time at central office. Now, is this on our agenda for the next executive board Absolutely. committee? Yeah. Do you have feedback both, on that, Bill? Both board goals and oh, policies are on the executive committee. Right. So I, I'm, I'm with you, Vera. I, I would like to, <coughs> and I there's a piece that I'm going to use a policy governance term, which is called a policy blitz. And you literally sit down and say, with what we have, what is truly needed here for board policy. A lot of our policies are procedures mm -hmm. in other places. They're management. That's a lot of what we've done over the last couple of years in the policy committee is to pull out a lot of the detail. Yep. And the wordsmithing that <laughs> seems to happen board to board. So, Matthew, you said you would ask us to hold off for now to to see where you guys come i mean it's at your discretion to do what you need to do and if there are there are goals that you need to consider as a board please do i just yeah. think i just think from my perspective <coughs> we as an su have a lot of work to do wrapping our heads around governance at a high level like how is it a priority for us to have goals how are we going to set them every year every three years whatever it is uh, what kinds of goals do we want to have? Specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, time-bound, um, you know, and, and then start at policies, I think it's embedded in board governance. Um, how do we want things reported to us? All, all this is wrapped up in the same, as I, I call it, a meta level, which is how do we want to operate effectively as boards? And I think that kind of, in a nutshell, is what I, what I heard the, the board, SU board, saying at its last meeting, I prioritize, there was a long, big list of things people could have chosen. It's, it's impressive to me, it made an impression that, that two of the top three things were board governance and board monitoring. That the SU as a whole prioritized those, those two things out of that whole list of things they could have chosen. So I think that tells you that people feel this is, they don't feel comfortable where we're at with these things. So the third you mentioned, Matt, was community engagement. Community engagement yeah. <clears throat> was that also, I, I didn't make it to the last SU board meeting. Was that third on the That's list? The third. We, we prioritized mm -hmm. three, yeah. We asked people to prioritize three, and those were the, the clear standouts. That's a tough one. That's a tough one sure. for me, especially when we have whatever number of registered voters and not even a, a third of them show up to to vote. So there's not a lot of, in my opinion, <laughs> time well spent somewhere else. Mm -hmm. All right. So Chris, you haven't shared your thoughts on goals. Yeah, you've you've asked us. Quiet. So I, I would love to hear what your <laughs> thoughts are. <Sorry. laughs> <laughs> so as I went through these four goals, the current goals that we have, it was it seemed like this was what was striking to us at the time and i can remember um yeah i think it was I'm trying to remember chris bryce and carl and myself and craig was on the board at the time um and i'm trying to remember who the fifth was amy tucker i think and this was what was we were all brand new carl was the only one who was not brand new and this was what was right in front of us at the time. Like, oh, this, you know, got problem with behavior in the classroom, and now oh, the boiler's about to die. And <laughs> these were emergencies. These were the things that were hitting us in the face. And so we pretty much, you know, got our thoughts onto paper. Um, they aren't, these aren't really goals. They're not specific, measurable, achievable, and all that. Um, so I think it's, it's, it's time for a reset. Um, I think we could get rid of the fiscal goal as a responsibility and not a goal. 
I'm a big fan of the three that came out of the SU meeting, board governance, board monitoring, and community engagement. Community engagement's always been a big one for me and one that I've, I've tried to focus on. And uh, sometimes it's like beating your head against the wall. <laughs> but uh, I think we still have to try to keep doing it. Um, and there are different ways, maybe different approaches we can take to get the community more involved. The garden was, is a great example of, way, of a way to draw people in. Um, so I would be in favor at this point, I think, of starting from scratch and, and definitely using these three goals that, the, that we've identified at the SU level, um, including, for sure, policy, um, development and training are just wonderful things for, for the, you know, all these new board members we've had. People just come in and, and have to try to hit the ground running, which is um, kind of an impo impossible task. Yeah. <laughs> then the next thing they know, they're chairing a board meeting. <laughs> which is absolutely horrible. <laughs> I heard you did a great job. I, wasn't there at all, but I heard you did a great job. Yeah. Thank you. So I guess at, at this point, I'm in favor of um, maybe pausing for a bit, seeing what the executive committee recommends. And of course, I'll be on the, I am on the executive committee, and I'll be paying attention to that and bringing that back to you all. And at the same time, all of us may be thinking about what's really important for us to achieve in the short term without, you know, kind of letting go of this and just um, letting, letting it get driven from outside of this board. Um, if there are specific things for us to work on, whether it's behavioral or monitoring or policies, um, maybe some specific action items for us to dig in a little bit deeper at a future board meeting to flush out our thoughts. But you know, we just spent an hour kind of figuring out what goals actually are <laughs> at a much higher level. Um, when it's, is the it's a tough discussion. It's it's on on April 25th, I believe. So the, can we the, put the another four goals on our next um, meeting for May, and maybe instead of an hour, let's flush out 30 minutes so that hopefully in June we can really either have something more concrete done. Yeah. So what's our goal for our board goals in May? What, what are, what's the purpose of that 30 minutes? I think minutes? one, the feedback from what yep. you guys discussed at your um, WCS or yep. the executive committee meeting. Okay. And I mean, for me, I have prioritized some that I brought for tonight, which okay. I don't want to share tonight because we need to move on. But I would suggest maybe each of us like jotting down maybe a couple of important pieces to guide our board work within those three topics. Do you have any other topics in the stuff that you were looking at? No. So those three would cover everything you've got on your list? Well, I believe so, but I mean, it's hard to say under um, like monitoring. Right. I would hope that academic would be a huge piece in that. Yeah. So I think they are, but I think as the executive committee and the SU board move forward with like what's in those topics, yep. will be covered. I, I don't have anything outside of what I think would fall in those. Does that sound good to everybody? Yeah, I mean, as long as we are still, I certainly don't want to disclude academic and behavior and all. I think for as much as I was saying these don't seem like goals to me, there's still a lot of really good both information and questions yeah. and stuff we should be thinking about. It was just kind of odd to me the way it was written. All right, sounds good. We'll put it on for 30 minutes in May. And moving on to 3.3, the town center plan update. I checked with Carl and I didn't think there, I don't think there was anything to report. I don't know if you've heard anything different. Heard anything. Carl was the one that was the contact on that. So, we'll so do we as a town even know what's going to on with that like I saw a newspaper article that they were gonna call the trees down and then that was it. I'm know. not even sure if they've actually applied for their Act Thank you, Matt. 50 yeah, Thanks yet. for coming Matt. Okay. I mean I'd be glad to reach out to the Michael Rushman I I actually know and find out just what the status is. 
I mean, the town doesn't have any more of a status, but I would you must be able to tell us to at least if they're if they've applied for Act 250 and just what's happening. Because it seems like it's been months since yeah. I've seen something like yeah. months. So I'm just curious if it was just. I don't know for sure. I'll try to have a conversation with Carl and find out what's happening. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the driveway was just on there because there was a hole there. I don't know if there's any any update to the driveway. Um, she got had, filled. So less no. of a hole. <laughs> Chuck, Chuck did order. Um, he put some stay mat in. Yeah. Which which helped it. A little bit, but then he has ordered some of the um, that. I talked to him today. Yeah. He opted not to go with this. Oh, okay. I showed you. Uh, he got the, the cold, patch. Cold, cold patch. patch in the bag. Yeah. Um, we did talk a little bit today about maybe trying some concrete. Yep. Might be an easier. Yep. We're last doing some research fix, online maybe. and concrete. That's a really good idea. Yeah. So I think he's going to get a bag. Okay. Because it's. Jeep. It's half the half the money yeah. compared yeah. to even just regular coal patch. So. <laughs> and yeah. I, you know, I let him know I was more than help, happy to come up and give him a hand with it too. So great, thank you. Take care. If he's got my contact info, so um, go from there. Great, thank you. Sounds good. Three point five construction list prioritization. I tried to go back through some of the um, original estimates that uh, Black River Design gave to us, and I was able to fill in some <laughs> holes and, and try to put a cost next to this list that we had put together of um, existing needs, known needs in, in the building. And you'll see that maybe half, not even half, are, are filled in, and uh, I think we're going to work on getting some numbers to the rest of them. But this starts to give you a sense for some of the things that are out there. Uh, the roof is in there as the top top item. And you know the last we had heard on paving the entire driveway, we had, had that figure, but that's for a full, I think a full redo as opposed to a skim coat or anything like that. Um, um, C is completed. Yeah, I was going to say C was We completed. did do the sinkhole repair. Yeah. I couldn't remember if that happened. I meant to tell you that when you saw yeah. this earlier this week. When did that happen? Uh, last it summer. happened last summer. I last thought summer. it happened okay. when it actually... And we did it temporary, but we... Two and then over the summer it was... Excellent. Really 2A important. is done. 2B is in the process of being completed. And 2C is being explored right now. All right. I mean, the big piece that I would add here, and Chris, you can add to this because we talked about it, it happened at the end of the construction project. We could have some major kitchen work looming out there, depending on what the codes are going to come in now. I mean, and we were warned about that in the construction. That so do you know, do you have even a ballpark guess, Bill, as if it's major code items? Like, what are we talking about? I think we're in the forty to $50,000 range. If I remember that I'm remembering a discussion back to November. Okay. Let me see if I can yep. ping our favorite clerk the work and see if he remembers. All right. And do you think it's doable to if I go back to Black River Design folks to fill in any of these others or are these going out and getting fresh? No, estimates? I think it, we want ballpark. It, All we're looking for is Bob. Yeah, just say Jesse or John, and they'll get nervous and say, guys, this is nowhere near co quote. It's, we're just yep. trying to yep. make the priority list. And if you need me to talk to John, I can talk okay. to you about that. <laughs> they don't like to say, hey, Black River Design says it's going to cost this much, and it just costs double. What's right. right. We're not pinning you on what it costs. We're just trying to make our capital plan. So if I can get the rest of these filled in for next time, um, at some future date, the plan was to maybe just go over, set some set some priorities for what we'd like to set aside money for, or tackle with any money we have available. Well, other than the the driveway and the kitchen work, are there any others that are really standing out there as far as they got to happen sooner? I mean, the roof we've already yeah. got, I don't so, feel is in that. I think we have some places inside this building we want to paint. 
And it's not just getting someone to run the paint, to paint. Right, it's getting the other stuff off. It's getting the other stuff off, right. and it's very labor intensive. I mean, we, we found that out in the construction project. And there's some walls here that you can pretty easily, and you're like, it shouldn't be that much labor. It's most of it will peel, it's the other 20 or 25% that won't. It's literally hand scraping with very small scrapers, not, not a big scraper. So it's that the amount of prep work that's gone into some of the walls that we've repaired in here is just 95% of the cost is the prep. I mean, I, I'm being a little large there, but probably, uh, Chris, you and I were sitting around here in those discussions, and it was probably 75%. I don't feel like that's off base. No, I agree with you. With it's all they had multiple people in there just yeah. do this. It's just throw this for really hours. tiny scrapers. So it will bond, and then you have a good bondable layer from then on. Because what's happened is people have used whatever paint they could get from whatever store instead of getting masonry paint. Yeah. Do you remember we used to have the peeling of the walls? Yeah. So that so, could be a, a fairly significant cost cost with the labor yeah and there are walls around here and chuck is awesome he's like i want to tackle this and i said i get it but how much time is it going to cost you to do that versus hiring that out to someone to come in and do yeah. that Let's take a look at the conference room he's been trying to just do that yeah so if we could get a number of rooms or a number of walls we had we had that we have that somewhere time. we have that somewhere you know we could go to the painting plan yeah. And we'd know right away yeah. if we went to the plans and did a count of it. Because then we have a, it's easy to get a cost per square foot. Yeah. <coughs> well, if we're going to, if we're talking about kitchen work or painting walls. Yeah. Kitchens. Absolutely. Yeah. Without question. Yeah. I'm right with you, Eric. I don't want to have a health department coming here and shut down the kitchen. <laughs> we can just run another coat of paint over that and worry about it later, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I don't, I, don't want the kitchen, I don't want the kitchen shut down. Exactly. <laughs> Anything else um, stand out here to anybody you want to discuss right now as opposed to I just want to echo what Eric said. I think yeah. the capital plan, as we're loyally looking at it, the kitchen really should. The kitchen should be a priority. Mm -hmm. When will we, how will we know? Are we, we going to be inspected and, and at that point they'll say these are code violations or not? Just show up. Yeah, we usually do fine. It's oh, we've been. We they just came last month and we're yeah. fine. We yeah. made it through this time. Yes. Yeah. Well, right. but are, so are we looking at having kitchen work done this summer? No, not right now. So it's something that's going to be needed, but it's not imminent. What's, why wouldn't we get it done this summer? Uh, well, we have. So right now, and the why we wouldn't get it done, it, let me say it this way, it's not on the plan to do it right now. It hasn't been then from where we left it in November. It was one of those, let, let's hold on it right now. We were working on roof and getting to where we were at. Um, and I, no reason I, I guess, yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I would say, as we're putting money away for a capital plan, that would be one in years to come, I guess, is to rephrase what I was saying, as we get inspected and they say, oh, you need to fix this or yeah. this. And correct me if I'm wrong, Bill, anybody that would do summer work on schools probably full right now. I mean, they wouldn't be available because it's such a short time it, frame. It depends, it depends on, I mean, one of the issues is we need to get into the drainage system, which means going into the floor. So we got to tear up the floor. I think a little more planning and preparation yeah. we need to go into that, not let's yeah. start in April for a kitchen renovation this summer. And it, it, if you were doing, I mean, we wouldn't have planned to have summer school and other activities happening here at the school if we knew we were going to do something And as long like as that. nobody's mm -hmm. saying you're shut down and you can't yep. serve food out of there, right. I think. But so then it's something that probably does need to happen in the summer because there wouldn't be enough time during the school year, during any break. Oh, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it during a school year break. No, I did, it's only a summer project. So maybe looking forward to summer of 2019. Yep, something yeah. to keep in mind. Yeah. And that's the point of having the capital plan and the list, is keeping these things top of mind and planning ahead. Even though I'd much rather have that driveway. Well, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to have the driveway paved, but the kitchen is much more important. Thank you. There we go. I'm going to stand that car. I would prefer to have a driveway paved.
<laughs> natural natural speed bumps. We'll just keep saying that. Three point six is um, my dirt road board member vacancy, and so maybe are we taking this out of order? I guess we have on five point three yeah. the resignation of a board member. Well, you, it, I think you can discuss about what you want to go forward. There's already something posted on the website okay. about so the vacancy. Our, our but it's really your way to say, and I didn't even bring it. I'm sorry, I should have brought for yeah. you the normal procedure, uh, which is we post it, letters come back either to the chair of the school. We've done it both ways for Berlin. Um, you as a board know who the candidates are. Um, there's a piece in statute that it, you should replace once the, you have 30 days from when you accept the resignation to appoint someone to the board. So that's before our next meeting then, because our yeah. next meeting is the 14th. Yeah, I've never seen an issue of that. I mean, some boards have been able to find a way to make that happen and some have not. Goaty's had a board vacancy for five months right now. So what is the deadline then for people to put in letters if we're saying that we would be taking that, care of it at our next meeting? That's up to you to decide how you want to I was that. looking at Chris. It's just that he was looking at you. Oh, okay. <laughs> I had a bunch of, I got like two sets of eyes at me, so I'm responding. Right. Sorry, Corinne. So what is the kind of... So the normal no, process. No, normally we post it, letters come back. Yeah. The board sits at some point. Uh, assuming review, we get letters back. Yeah, assuming you get letters back to review them. Uh, the last time this board interviewed for the position Corinne's in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And appointed. It was Vera was the last one. Oh, I didn't interview. I'm sorry. Oh. Sorry, Ben, I'm sorry. I think they interviewed just yours because yeah. there's more. Because there's the only two. time we had two candidates, yeah. yeah. Nobody else was pressing to get on the board. Oh. <laughs> So hopefully all of the people who are watching this on ORCA will contact people they know or maybe be interested themselves in, in being on the board and would send a, a letter of interest to either to the school or um, to the SU or to Right, well, we should, we, should make that, we should make that clear so it's not... Wonderful. Yeah, the, to, one, to one place. Okay. And then we can just do, you know, if you want them, just have them send them to the school. Uh, we can do that, or to the SU, and then we can gather those and have them back to you at a date to the board chooses. I think Carl always made himself available yeah. for that, so I'm, I'm That's great. fine with that. So do you use your C Winters at U32? I use both. I am currently using both. I'm trying to transfer over to use just Which the C, you C Winters at U32. Okay, because uh, we could send one out to some classroom families, too. Yeah. So... Might I suggest that we just get one statement that can go out all over the place? Sure. That. And so what's the deadline going to be? I was looking at my calendar. So I was thinking that if we had the deadline of May 4th, which is a Friday, mm -hmm. if we wanted them to actually part, if we didn't want to wait until our meeting to appoint them. We could meet very quickly, like that following Tuesday, Wednesday, either early morning, late afternoon, something. I'm gone that week. My son's graduating. The whole week of which week? The week of the 7th. Okay. I leave, I think it's on Tuesday. I'm actually leaving. Okay. I mean, you guys can do it without me. It's just all about getting a quorum. And so right. it means the three of you need to be available to be if I'm yeah. not. So. Three. So if we could, if we could meet at some point, appoint them, they can go get sworn in, so they could actually be part of our main meeting. Right. Was my thought. Yeah. Or we just do it at the main meeting, and they don't, and they are not a part of the main meeting. Exactly. It would be nice to have them on board if we could, if we could do it. I mean, it still doesn't, like, if we say the deadline is May 4th and we don't hear from anybody, obviously right. our decision is May 4th. Yep. I think putting May 4th really is a good time frame. And we can always decide from that point, we either do a quick meeting and appoint them or okay. wait into our maybe, which is fine too. So know. let me just take the template, put that information into it, get it back to maybe you do Chris for Front yep. Porch Forum. Yep. 
And if you want to share it with me, I'll share it with the okay. classroom. Okay. And share website. And website, yeah, we put share on the website. Share it with all of us, because we all have our ways we can. Yep. 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 News to notes. News to know. News to know, I mean, sorry. It's okay. Sounds good. I was thinking more like the Berlin Facebook page, but you know, news to know. <laughs> good. Okay, we'll try to get that by the end of the week at the latest. It should only take 10 minutes, so hopefully it's a day or two from now. All right. Thank you. Yep. We, we added a 3.7 for a, a brief discussion on the art and project photos, and Corinne, you had sent an email to a few of us. You want to? Could, could I ask a question first sure. before we totally leave, leave mm -hmm. what we were just talking about? Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Just um, when we have a meeting, is it acceptable if it's a meeting for something very specific, like we're talking about, like getting a new board member, for a person to call in? Yeah. We, we have before, yeah. yeah. Okay. Because yeah. that might be in. another yeah. possibility. Definitely. Yeah, you yeah, can definitely. Definitely. know what the policy was on that first. Definitely. You can watch Can't your foot. It. It's actually, we just follow the statute on that. You're on the court. You're on the court. Oh. <laughs> I'm the one making the problems. <laughs> <laughs> um, there we, go. we just follow the statute on that, Corinne. That, so any meeting you could have, you could have at this one too, any meeting you can use teleconferencing. It requires the chair to do a little bit different facilitation of the meeting when there's votes. but. Okay. Besides that, yeah, okay. I just it popped into my head. Yep, can you could definitely phone do that. or video, you know, synchronous Skype. Okay. Well, I knew that we had done that for a couple of Act 46, but I didn't know if that was different because it wasn't actually a, a board meeting. Um, do we want to pick a date to meet or do we want to wait and see if we have a candidate and then do a special meeting? It's up to you. I, I'm flexible I mean, as far as <laughs> either early morning or. Later Do you have a preference, Bill, to wait and see, or? I'm fine with waiting and seeing. Pick a time now? Yeah. All right, we'll I'm wait. I'm fine with waiting and seeing. Wait and see if we get anybody. <laughs> Fingers crossed for lots of candidates. It would be nice. Okay. All right, so 3.7. Okay. So I'm not quite sure whether it's, it's really a question, a comment, or what that I have, but regarding taking photos of student, um, whether it be artwork or projects, I understand, even though, and that's one of the things that I don't feel I received when I became a board member, was anything specific to FERPA or anything else. I was really given nothing when I started as a board member. Um, but I understand that it's, not okay, I mean, I've always known this, that it's not okay to be um, publishing anything that shows student names and faces on it. I understand that, I, I appreciate that. Um, what, I'm, what I'm a little confused with, I guess, trying to do a little bit more reading to figure this out, is that the sticking point to me seems to be whether or not something is considered to be a student record. And some things are very clear to me as far as if it's a report card, if it's a um, written piece of work and it's got their name and so forth on it. But the last time until just recently, um, the last time I had posted something on my Berlin Vermont Facebook page was of some student projects that were down at, um, at Tembridge Fair. And what it was, was just a, a collage of pictures where I purposely took pictures where there wasn't anything identifying about it. And so um, more recently, in fact, it was the week of the uh, school concert, I had been in the school. It was actually to take a picture of the library. I had been at the principal um, interviews, and I didn't realize that morning Carol had, had sent me a, a picture of the library to use for the town report. But I had dropped by thinking that's what I need to, to finish. And uh, when I was here, I saw some of the Egypt projects. And then I was really surprised a couple days later when Carol called me and asked me why I was taking photos. And I was just like, it's the Egypt projects. I've always been interested. And she asked, what was I going to do with them? I said, sometimes I just take the pictures, take the pictures to share with my family. Sometimes it's for the historical society. Once in a while, I post stuff. but it, I never did end up putting anything about the Egypt photos, but there was that. So then more recently, 
um, I had come into the science fair, and I took photos. That's a lot harder to actually take the photos without having names on posters or photos, but that doesn't mean you're going to use them that way. You can only put yourself in so many positions to try to take a picture that avoids it, but in cutting and pasting it, which is you know, what I did with the, um, with the Tunbridge ones, this was what I ended up putting up. There's actually, it's four collages of photos. And so I just need clarity if having artwork or projects that does not have names, faces, grades, any of that type of stuff on it, whether or not those are considered student records if they are, then I'd like to advocate for the school providing more photos to use, whether it to be posting online or um, submitting to the world. Chris Dodge was one who submitted photos on a regular basis, and that was something that I noticed in the Act 46 survey, that there was more than one comment, I believe, about what happened to having photos in the world. People love that. I actually did on what I sent around, I, you know, 340 something people saw what was put out, which is great for a post because I, I brought some others and, you know, the, 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 more, the more boring ones might be like 120, 160 people. There are things that also take off like the uh, U32 Senior Offering Day, over a thousand people have seen that. I, it's really effective to have positive news going out. And I just want to make sure that not only myself, but anybody is really clear on what's acceptable. Because mm -hmm. when I am taking photos of stuff, I really don't feel I'm the only one. And I get it that I'm a school board member. But as long as what I'm posting is appropriate, I don't think it's a problem. So I just need some clarification. First, I want to say I, I appreciate it. I think your heart is obviously in the right place, and spreading positive messages about the school is hugely important for that community engagement piece. And that's, um, why, that's why I said to you in the email. Yeah, me, it was like, Grant, I think your heart, you're right in the right place. The thing that we have a couple of things for here. So any student work is part of the student record. That's been ruled on by the federal aid, with or without student name on it. Um, I can't tell you if it's been ruled specifically that way, but that's the way, way we, we take it. We do have a few parents in this school that have elected that nothing be sent out about their child with or without a name, that nothing be released. There's not a lot of them, because I know when I go in a classroom and I'm taking this thing around and post something on Twitter, I quickly say to the teacher, is there anyone here I can't take a picture of or I can't show something of? because and then I make sure I don't get it. Um, so it's, it's really that one step that we ensure because I didn't, I don't know, it probably 95% or 98% chance those photos of what you have there are okay. But without doing that, we have a couple of kids in our supervisory union. And I don't know if they're here at Berlin without going and checking student records that are under some protective custody. And that you'd say, well, there's no name, there's nothing there. I, I understand that, but I have to protect, you know, we're, in, we're asked to protect anything that might be identifiable to them. Um, so it's really, it's just that one step of checking piece. And then, because I, 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 I mean, I can't say it strongly enough from what I, how I started this, you're, I'm totally with your intent. Because the more positive news and more positive attribute we can get out there. That's the only piece we need to do is to check before we post. And that's one thing that we do constantly around here. And really, we, I depend on the classroom teachers because they know who their kids are because we ask at the beginning of every school year of every parent. And I don't even know, and I, frankly, I don't want to know because I think there's better people to protect them than myself as a superintendent or who are the ones that re need very high levels of protection. And so so is there a way to do to for Corinne to do what she's doing as a school board member. I know there's probably a heightened well, parents will come in and do that all the time. Right, and we can't stop. We can't on, stop. We can't Facebook. stop the parents from doing it, but we can stop those of us because the piece that comes back is that. So we would need to to have to know. 
we would Corinne would just need to know who not to take photos or student work of. Is that a confidentiality issue? It is. It is to a degree. Yes. So then, parents shouldn't be able to take. I come can't, in and take. I can't stop a parent unless you make a policy as a board that you don't want parents to take photos in the school. Right. That's the only that's, way I can do it. That was going to be my next question. Yeah, that's the only way I can do that. And so the the two things I pointed out was one. As far as I know, board members have been given nothing to make sure that that's that's true. That's clear. And if there is any way to to work within it, and two, then what I'm advocating for is just on a regular basis, and regular in my mind can mean anything. It can mean monthly, quarterly, weekly, whatever kind of regular basis that some some photos mm -hmm. that are you know good representations of what's going on. It doesn't have to be a kid. Okay. But, you know, artwork something is made available to have not just on the school website, but elsewhere, out in the media, in some way. So would it help if, um, I'm trying to think, we put a lot of that in our newsletter. And that's on the website, it goes to Front Porch Forum, it's sent to parents, it's sent with paper copy for people who don't have access to the web, but would it be possible for you to take, because then that has been, we know that is okay stuff to put out, then you could transfer that over to the well, blog for well, the people who don't have access to any of those other means of the, uh, the newsletter? Um, yeah, I think I have used that in the past, but as I say, I don't even do it all that often just because, I mean, all the stuff that I'm posted and doing, it's in my spare time. Yeah. Lots of times it's instead of sleeping, <laughs> um, <laughs> quite frankly. Um, but I think having things in, in other media things as far as the world, the world has become much more popular even though it's no longer delivered um, directly to homes as far as it's the free newspaper because even the Times Argus there's only select things you can see online and you're either paying to be online to get everything or you're paying for the newspaper and I just think with all the talk that we've had as far as community engagement and all that we do need to reach beyond the parents and yes the parents see a newsletter and so forth but the rest of the community isn't seeing sure. that and then what I send out and post it's not everybody. You get more people with something like the world than you do in what I'm doing. So, Corinne, to answer, to give you a more direct answer, I would like to have you do it because you want to do it. Because I'd rather have a board member taking the pictures and taking the time for the amount of time it takes than to have to ask one of our staff to stop serving kids and parents. So I'd like to find a way to do that. Um, you're the first board member that's ever come to another one first for Corinne is I want to do this do this work of positive community engagement through taking pictures um, I'm gonna to have to figure out Carol and I are gonna to have to figure out the confidentiality piece um, but I don't think that's insurmountable um, but I think I think we need you know I, I'd rather I'd rather have you doing it than to take a, a employee here away from a kid or a parent and I mean in, in what I'm saying I'm not trying to add work to anybody. I just simply want to see it be done. Right. I you know, and it's kind of like with the policies, how I've offered to somehow help with that, too. I'm more than willing to help do whatever to make it work. I'm not trying to make work for others. I just want to see it happen. So any way that it can be done, just, just let me know. I just want to add something. Um, so Emily did a project on Berlin history when she was in sixth grade. And I just want to share that the, there is an importance of the historical society to have pictures and things that have happened in our community because it was so important for Emily when she was doing the Berlin history piece to be able to go to the historical society and collect some of the pictures and the history that she was writing about. So I do feel as much as it's important on um, local social media pieces, there's a huge piece there too about the history of Berlin and the history of the school. 
that I can say specifically for what Emily had to do in her research project and looking back at some of the stuff that happened in the school years ago was really beneficial for her and for her classmates that she was able to share it with. So I do think that's another piece of the history and the historical society that's just as important. Yeah. It's music to my ears. <laughs> <laughs> Those are all important things. And I also want, I want us all to, to remember and appreciate the attention and concern that Carol and others pay to student privacy and, and making sure that those parents of children who don't want their kids work out there in the public at all are, are respected in that regard. So it sounds like we can find a way to do this. And I don't have it dreamed up right now, but it's down as a checklist right. of how do we do that because, um, I mean, I've already stated my reason why. Yep. I want people working with kids and families. With um, another board member hopefully coming on soon, it's just really important for us to start thinking and maybe kind of developing our own little lists of what we have found helpful or wish we had had when we started. <laughs> wish we'd had when we started. <laughs> it's a good, good idea. Yeah. I mean, if everybody can just think of a few things, I think that would help us. Yeah start developing that there are a lot of there are a lot of things available I think when I first started the the essential work of, of yeah. boards the was VSBA good, is right VSBA where I would start they're they're yeah. happening this month the essential work yeah workshops that have been advertised for VSBA those are good ones to go to I, right here in Montpelier I think one of the problems has been working with boards this board and boards in the past is usually the turnover is when you have the town meeting you get new board in it's or new board members in so the first meeting is based on the superintendent and whoever, you know, training the board, going through it, getting some information. What I'm seeing is we've had people come in at alternate times and we don't have the time and the agenda when they've come on to actually do that training and the individuals who are here now. So that's, that's what I see. Um, so what Corinne said might be good if like mid, flow now we're going to have another board member and that tends to happen so the dedicating one one training in the beginning is, is not going to cut it but you don't have time in your agenda to do that training every meeting when someone new comes on so yeah. that's a really good idea Corinne is to have something in place and then I don't know the chair and Bill meet with that new member at another Something time. I don't like know. Some but sort of orientation. Yeah, right. that's, I don't think it's been any lack of not wanting to do it with this board. It's just been when the times yeah. people have come into the board are not usual. Right. All right. We're going to move on to the next item. 4.1 uh, reports to the board. Um, Administration, it's a verbal report. It, you know, uh, we I reported so early just a week ago, but there are two things that I wanted to let you know very quickly. Um, Chuck wants and wants you all to know that there's going to be a dead tree, pine tree that's going to be removed, um, but also with the grounds work and permission from the board, that wooden structure on the playground. So we would like to demolish it. We don't feel it's safe and sound. And we have um, some money put aside from the playground um, fund, but um, PTNA would hopefully help out, but we would want to start another fund to replace that uh, piece of equipment. Um, I know that any, I don't think it's a major change to the schools or the ground. Um, should go through the board, but with your permission, we would like to destroy and get rid of it. Probably happen in the summer, though. The wooden structure out there and start the process of replacing that structure with something that's safer and more modern. Are you talking about the shelter or the little garage building? The wooden structure over it's there. It's over there. It has like the old bridge. Oh, you mean the slide and the, the wood. Structures, yes, right over, over okay. that I get end it. of the playground. That's the thing that came from Burger King, was it? No. no. So you still there have used to be, the same thing? There used to be the structure over there that was like a lot of But it, it's right, it's right out there. So, um, 
you know, in the past when we've talked about doing um, any changes to the area, the facilities and such, if we wanted it to go through the board before it was done. And if we are going to have permission to do that, then Chuck would like to start, it won't be done until summer, but we'll start the process of looking into how and what and when now. I'm surprised that Liberty hasn't said, and I usually Michelle tells me this, but I'm surprised our insurance company, because we had to take down all the wooden structures on the other playgrounds. The yeah, I, I, I no, think really? we're, well, I yeah. know this one was I'm surprised inspected. that one's still up. I know it was inspected when we did the Right, but just like last year, Romney's got taken down. Doty lost some two years before that. And the insurance company comes around and inspects, and when it gets to a certain level, they're like, you take it down now. Splintering, yeah, is that the, the issue? Or? We want to be proactive, it, not reactive. Rot and rot like and yeah. yeah, we'd like to be proactive, not reactive. So if that is, I don't know, if it's something you have to move on or let us know, or just FYI. Any questions? Any objections to that? I'm still confused what it is. <laughs> I hate to be totally dense. <laughs> it's got, it's got, got a. I'll show you. It's got a tall you can't see it from spiral the slide. It's out there now. It's, little, um, little wooden bridge, a couple of other little slides off the side. It's for it's little. It's the Burger King equipment then. I don't know. I don't know, Burger know but King it's right yeah. over in the corner. No. It's definitely not the Burger King. It's wooden. Right. It's wooden. Right. It's the first structure to the right of the garden, if you're looking out at the garden. Yeah. Right over there. It's all the way yeah. in. Yeah. I went up the slide and hit my tailbone one year, <laughs> working with a student. <laughs> huh. Yeah, so it's getting old, it's yeah. wood. Yeah. Time we to, feel it time needs to, come to be down. gone. It's the school board's decision on anything that is grounds and such to be removed or added. I'll yeah. make the motion to... Is there going to be a cost to removing this other than there, disposal there, of it? There will be some costs. Yeah because we're going to need some crew help. We've got to do some digging and things like that, I'm sure. I don't know for certain, but I would think that they, I would anticipate costs. Do I anticipate more than a couple thousand dollars? Probably not, but I don't know what the disposal cost is, but perhaps I should bring it on. And did I miss it as far as replacement? We would have to fundraise to be able to get enough. We I think we have four thousand plus or minus in the playground fund at this time what was your motion I may retract that until we can find a <laughs> more close cost of do you want um, Chuck Pocket to um, just, just, let's just get some estimates review and, we'll and get an estimate. yeah. I will yeah. have sure. to do that I think that would be the best starting point yeah, and also we are down one custodial staff, so Chuck is doing double duty a lot lately. There are just today. no subs. There are no substitutes to be found. So I will talk to Chuck about that. The only other thing that, uh, just an FYI, um, they are coming out. We're piloting a science, new science kneecap. Um, it, not science kneecap, it's now science SBAC. It is no longer part of the uh, kneecap. It is an online, similar to the SBAC. Um, I would highly recommend you go to the uh, SBAC site. They have some S uh, science pieces that you can check out. It's a um, change from being at the fourth grade level. It is now a fifth grade level assessment. And again, this year it is simply being piloted um, Tyler Smith and I have looked at it. We've worked through it. Um, it. It relies heavily on reading skills, which we feel is a concern for you know various reasons. But I suggest you go to the portal. And if you would, I know we had limited time this meeting, but I can show you at any time how to get there. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Carol? Uh, finance report? Yes. Um, so here in, um, there really hasn't been any change since March. Um, you know, I think all the rest of these you've seen, you saw at your March meeting of the increase in, you can see the March items there, hasn't been anything changed in April. Um, you know, we're starting to 
on, on the overall general fund balance for the capital fund. We'll know more once we get the roof finished and how much, because there's some contingency money in there. All right. Thank you. Any questions for Bill? Four point three executive committee. Um, you heard Matt talk a little bit about what we're working on and planning on working on board goals and um, work plan uh, SU wide. I've just started being on the executive committee a couple of months ago, and it's been been interesting. We meet about a week before the SU board meetings when we can and help plan the agendas, and it's been kind of a, a learning experience for me to see what's a priority at the SU level. Um, it's been pretty interesting. Anything else you want to speak to about the executive committee? Thank you for that clarification. Any other questions about the board orders? I was wondering for Walmart, and this can be passed back around, um, the holiday supply? Mm -hmm. And we were reimbursed for PTNA from that money. Oh, that's part of the PTNA oh, stuff. Oh, PTNA money on. has to go through. There's, um, we always do a gift for giving, and there's a certain amount that people have not taken from the mittens, and it gets to a deadline. The PTNA has set aside a certain amount of money that they will. So we go over and do frantically some shopping the day before the deadline. And then we submit that to PTNA and they check that out. I thought PTNA did their own checkbook. Up, up to a certain point. Excuse me? I thought PTNA did their own checkbook, their own they expenditures. Do, but we have to pay for it through, we pay for it, we give them the receipt because they have allocated so much money, then they reimburse. Right, but this is an expense out on our board orders for Walmart. It, it, it is, there was money coming back in though. It was reimbursed back to the school. Any other questions? Did you not want to sign this? No. Okay. Any further discussion? The motion has been made and seconded to approve the board order in the amount of twenty-four thousand six hundred seventy-three eighty-nine. Those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Any abstentions? I'm abstaining. And uh, just very quickly, we send, we try to send the board orders out ahead of time, and the idea behind that was if there were questions. We could shoot them to Bill and I so we can be prepared to right. answer, you know, any questions yeah. at that time. Good point. I'm sorry, I didn't read them until today. <laughs> um, let's see, 7.0, future agenda items. We know we have um, Cindy Gothier in May. What was the overview on walkthroughs? That came supervision and evaluation. Was the evaluation. Sup or, uh, you know, the supervision. Should we plan on that for May? Is that something we want to try to put onto the May agenda? It's up to Carol and Bill. I mean, Carol would give you an update of where she is. She's shooting for... She, I think, I I think, think you all wanted something a little more extensive where I could show you what the forms look like and teach mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if, if we have someone possibly new coming on the board at that day. Cindy's coming in. I don't know okay. so uh, we'll what your you know your timeline is, so it could be something that when we meet to can we keep it brief for May? And I'm only asked suggesting May or maybe June, but June is a full board meeting as well. And I think to see the work that Carol has done with the supervision and evaluation, we wouldn't get that from Aaron right away, obviously. No. So, so I would right. say why don't you why don't you have Carol do that here in May and we that's fine. And we can I do it want, really I can short do it and sweet. It very doesn't, short okay. and sweet. It does yes. not have to be like, I'm I think thinking be, 15, 20 minutes tops. I think yeah, it would yeah, be yeah, really yeah. good for you to see the form. Good. 
All right, so we'll plan on that. You know, what I would like to do ahead of time is send out a document concerning Charlotte Danielson's uh, okay. domains and um, so that when I'm talking about the, so if you'd be willing Absolutely. to review that, I can get that out to you and then when we're talking about it, you can say, oh, I understand that because it's in yeah. this. We should take the, the um, performing teacher part of the system as well so they understand the timeline and all the different components. Yep, yep, so we'll get that out, and then so you'll have a frame of reference when I'm showing you what Teach Point looks like. Okay. So, timeline and. The, take the, you know, the two pages that describe the performing teacher? Mm hmm. That, that would be a good part from the whole, whole supervision evaluation document. I don't have to look through the whole thing, but you know the color, the color ones, the pages I'm talking, you know, that have the different color backgrounds. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And then we also have the board goals again for 30 minutes. We will have the board goals scheduled for 30 minutes and come prepared with your favorite few that fit into those three categories, hopefully. Um, school safety, would that be Carol as well or would that be mm -hmm. someone else? Mm -hmm. Carol, can you and give I'm, us a... Yeah, I'm not sure the reference because we did a school safety, what, four months? Five months ago. Oh, you just and you gave some updates the last time we were sitting here in March. Mm -hmm. I think it was um, more of the SU school safety work that has been done, and it's not. I don't think it has to. Like, it hasn't be happened. May because Jen was talking about it, so we were yeah. thinking like later summer, even maybe early. How about we? Yeah, can we let's, 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 let's do that early school year. That's All fine. Right. So we'll hold that. The, I think um, she was talking. I when I had asked her the question, it was more like the common language amongst all the schools. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're talking yeah. about yeah. updating the, that the full SU like yeah. 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 policy, like procedure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like yeah. That's our second April meeting. Yes. So then that's what Jen was saying. So when yeah. I, it got on for future meetings, it was definitely that's not right. in May. Okay. It was so it can be pushed out a little. Yeah. So we'll yeah. keep that on there for now for for later. Oh, more just a reminder. <laughs> Um, the local meetings versus supervisory meetings, Kern, was that something that you had brought up? No, that was Bill as far as are we going to, how many WCSU meetings are we looking at having? And I'm okay. thinking, does that need to wait till closer to the end of the year when the executive committee has figured out Maybe. what's happening? I mean, as far as what kind of topics and how often mm -hmm. we'll need to meet about it. Okay. So we'll leave that one on there for a future month too. Maybe not. Maybe not next month, but maybe the so month So right after. now, is there four? So right or now, like March to March. So right now, we have the carousel SU meeting happening in June. Right. And if we stay with the, what the plan was last month, but the executive committee, we haven't finalized this. I don't know if this will be a board chairs and executive committee. Um, that was my. I mean, my push to the executive committee is to say um, in September, October, February, and June, those are SU, they're carousel SU meetings only. So there are four. There'll be those four. And then there'll still be two S other SU meetings, but they don't augment the local board meetings, which are March, because we have to have reorganization and we need budget in December. In December. Okay. Thank you. We're trying to, we actually are creating the calendar. It's just, I said to Krista the other day, we need to do a version one because we realized we can't do a version, a complete version. Just, the policy is just that. a perfect example. Right now, we can't get anyone to commit to any of the subcommittee times, <laughs> except for school quality because it's set. Okay. And now I've seen two dates, and I just want to clarify. There is not a meeting this Thursday, correct? There is not one this Thursday. <laughs> because that's what's in the, the original meeting minutes? Yeah, yeah it shouldn't be. It's the end of April. It's the end of April. So, Chris, the only the only part of that where I would still advocate is for us to still have, even in those months, a meeting here, not necessarily a long meeting, but to me it seems like with a new principal coming on, with new board members, that it's a great way. You know, I felt horrible when we've had some presentations happen up at U32, which is later in the evening those meetings don't start till seven o'clock to have stuff like that's when the genius hour happened whereas if we were still having a monthly meeting here even if it was just about having a presentation and maybe signing board orders or something it could yep. be taken care of yep okay uh, got it so we'll keep that one on for a future agenda item 
um, maybe in June, we said, Bill. I don't know if you want to make a note here. If you've made a note to yourself, the electric and heating comparison over the last two years. Yeah, I did. I did meet one. Two years. Yep. Um, construction list can go back on as we fill in more gaps on um, the capital construction list. I'll try to get more dollar figures next to those uh, next to those items from John and Jesse. Anything? I think when we look at the um, the board goals too, actually some of that stuff will come out for yeah. our working calendar to not necessarily monitor, but to receive the data. And obviously that's going to be working with Bill and the leadership team as to when those pieces yeah. can report out to the board. Okay. But that will, I think having that calendar is just as beneficial as having the goals yeah. because it keeps us on a schedule of right. getting that information. Good. And, and when, at what point would we have more information about enrollment? I know it's always changing as we, as we go through. I know I've had some parents express to me concern that something will happen like what happened this year where we get some kids in at the last minute and then we have to shuffle things around and the what's the contingency the, plan and, the, and all that stuff. Because I know we're right up against the edge of classroom size.